Hey guys, okay. Uh, today we will talk about uh, chemical regulation. Uh, chemical regulation of respiration. I have already made a few videos about this neural regulation of respiration. If you have not seen that, please do check it out. And now uh, let me tell you about this chemical regulation. This chemical regulation is performed uh, by three groups of uh, chemoreceptors. Those are nothing but peripheral chemoreceptors central or medullary chemoreceptors and pulmonary and myocardial chemoreceptors coming first to this peripheral chemoreceptors these peripheral chemoreceptors they include carotid bodies plus aortic bodies and central medullary uh, chemoreceptors this is a chemosensitive area present in the medulla itself and coming to the pulmonary myocardial chemoreceptors they are present in the pulmonary and the coronary blood vessels present in pulmonary and uh, coronary blood vessels now first let me tell you about this a uh, central group of chemoreceptors present in the medulla oblongata present in medulla oblongata okay uh, firstly uh, whatever the changes happens in the body if it it will be releasing the carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions this uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions they couldn't uh, get any changes they couldn't i mean they do not alter any changes in the respiratory centers namely brg drg we told they will be performing inspiration expression blah 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 etc but the changes in this uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen ion will not affect these uh, respiratory centers will not affect these respiratory centers then how so it is happening this will affect a chemosensitive area will affect a chemosensitive area adjacent to the medulla adjacent to the medulla and this will be exciting this other receptors present in the medulla region so this is how happening this carbon dioxide hydrogen do not directly uh, act upon these uh, uh, respiratory centers they first uh, stimulate the chemosensitive area adjacent to the medulla which in turn uh, regulate this uh, respiratory centers present in this medulla region now uh, among this uh, uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen ion this carbon dioxide will be more effectively stimulating this center rather than the hydrogen ion so why so this can be your uh, viva question or it could be uh, some sort of athema question so why so it is because uh, this hydrogen ions now they cannot cross the blood brain barrier they cannot cross the blood brain barrier that is the reason why it couldn't reach this chemosensitive area and therefore do not show so much effect they couldn't show so much direct effect here they show some indirect effect upon this uh, chemosensitive area whereas this carbon dioxide will be found in this uh, cerebrospinal fluid so that it will be affecting the center directly it will be affecting the center directly now let us see the mechanism how it is happening uh, how it is happening so um, increased arterial carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide levels in the arterial blood has been increased therefore co2 in the cerebrospinal fluid like ecf and cerebrospinal fluid also increases so carbon dioxide the who, who is the best friend for this carbon dioxide in our body water so it combines with it to form the carbonic acid which divides to form hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion this will be stimulating the chemosensitive area chemosensitive area in the medulla this chemosensitive area in turn uh, what is it stimulate this uh, dorsal respiratory group which will be mainly having the eye neurons that will act via the phrenic nerve it will be acting upon the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles and that will causes the ventilation so this ventilation can overcome this uh, increased co2 levels in the arterial blood 
in the arterial blood so this is the mechanism how it is happening now coming this is all about the central medulla uh, central or the medullary chemoreceptors present in the medulla oblongata now coming to the peripheral chemoreceptors so we know peripheral chemoreceptors includes the aortic bodies and the carotid bodies now uh, if you consider this as an arch of aorta Oh, uh, this is your common carotid artery, the left, left one, and uh, this is the right uh, common carotid artery, and this is the brachiocephalic artery. Yeah. Now, where are these carotid bodies are located? These carotid bodies are located at the bifurcation of the common carotid arteries, whereas the aortic bodies are present in the arch of aorta or the ascending aorta. So, it is present in the arch of aorta or the ascending aorta. Now, what does these carotid bodies do? The carotid bodies now it will be having two special features what are the special features namely it will be having a very high rate of blood flow therefore even a very small changes now it can easily detect it and it will be having high metabolic rate the higher metabolic rate than compared to the brain into three times it will be having higher metabolic rate therefore here the metabolic as metabolic rate is more more metabolites are released and this uh, release of metabolites can be easily detected by this increase increased blood flow by this um, carotid bodies this has detected now now what is its function it has to send the signal to the brain how it is sending it will be sending to the brain stem via the ninth cranial nerve namely the glossopharyngeal nerve to the brain stem this uh, carotid bodies uh, these are more efficient they are highly efficient when compared to this aortic bodies these aortic bodies uh, they'll also the same function they'll be uh, they get stimulated to the lower oxygen content in the blood uh, and will be sending the signals to the brain stem via the vagus nerve via the vagus nerve when you uh, see at both of them these carotid bodies are more efficient when compared to the aortic bodies compared to the aortic bodies but important point here you have to note is what is a stimulant for this peripheral chemoreceptors the stimulant for this is decreased oxygen content in the arterial blood decreased oxygen content in the arterial but this is the first and foremost important uh, stimulant and this uh, carbon dioxide levels and uh, hydrogen ions they'll be also detected i mean they they also act as a stimulant but up to less extent so rapid stimulation they stimulate the brain stem rapidly when compared to the central chemoreceptors so while telling you uh, while telling you about the central chemoreceptors i have told you what is a stimulant for the uh, central chemoreceptors for the central chemoreceptors the stimulant will be the carbon dioxide and hydrogen importantly but here the stimulant is decreased oxygen content in the arterial blood and also up to least extent this carbon dioxide and hydrogen also work out but compared to the central chemo receptors this peripheral chemoreceptors they stimulate this ventilation or some any sort of changes very much rapidly very much rapidly now let us go back to the flow chart i have gave you in the um uh, what is it our peripheral chemoreceptor mechanism yeah this is what i have told you now uh, decreased arterial oxygen or increased carbon dioxide and hydrogen but this will always remain as the main stimulant uh, they will be detected by the carotid and aortic chemoreceptors they will be again activating this drg again the same thing happened via phrenic nerve act upon the diaphragm and causes the ventilation again this is about the chemical regulation that is both uh, chemical regulation by the cent uh, central chemoreceptors and peripheral chemoreceptors okay guys um, thank you for watching my video if you like my video please do like share and subscribe